Ooh, feel that chill in the air? Well, you won't for long, thanks to the handy central heater you have installed in your home. While flipping on the heat in your home during the winter months seems like a no-brainer, staying warm took a tad more effort back in the 19th century. Okay, a lot more effort. From spending the whole day in the kitchen to rocking expensive beaver fashions and more, there were lots of creative yet odd ways people used to keep from freezing back in the day. So go ahead and warm up that brain, because you're about to get a major history lesson about life in the 19th century. Counting down from number 10, focusing on the hands. Have you ever walked outside in the severe cold without gloves? Doesn't feel too good now, does it? It makes sense that people in the 1800s would try extra hard to keep their hands warm during the winter months. Many people used a little accessory called a muff to keep their hands toasty. They were cylindrical in shape and would wrap around the hands in one big piece. You've probably seen women wearing these muffs in old Impressionist paintings back in school. Today, you might see an NFL quarterback use a version to keep his hands warm before a play in a winter game. And if he goofs it up, they might say he muffed it. A coincidence? Maybe. Probably not. Meanwhile, if you wanted to step it up a notch back in the old days, you'd upgrade your muff to one of these bad boys. A muff made with ceramic, metal, or silver, complete with slow-burning charcoal or boiling water inside. Now, that's a pretty dangerous muff if I do say so myself. While muffs did a pretty good job of keeping the hands warm, they weren't the most convenient to wear. They literally kept your hands tied. Number 9. Keeping the bed warm In freezing temperatures, staying warm at night was really tricky. There's only so many blankets you can pack onto a bed. To warm up the bed, people would sometimes put hard ceramic or metal containers filled with hot coals into the bed, similar to the muff I just mentioned. There were other versions of the bed warmer that looked like a very long cooking pan. A metal container was attached to a long wooden handle and would be filled with hot coals. Maybe it's just me, but putting hot coals under a bunch of blankets sounds like a terrible accident just waiting to happen. Today, I just have the dog and cat up on the bed with me. It's a little crowded, but it sure is warm. Number 8. A crazy amount of layers. When it's winter, it's common sense to layer up, right? Maybe an extra sweater under your coat or a scarf and hat will do. But back in the 19th century, people often came up with clever ways to layer their clothing. And it wasn't always the most conventional. Many people opted for a pair or two of long johns, undershirts, and leggings. Some women would wear multiple petticoats or slips if they could afford more than one or two. Writer Tammy Robinson explained on OffTheGrid.com how her ancestors would go as far as to stuff chicken feathers in their socks and the hems of their pants to keep warm. She also said that women would sometimes wear whole blankets around their necks like scarves. This way, their arms would still be free to do whatever they needed to. Number 7. Hanging out in the kitchen It's often said that the kitchen is the best room in the house, but that's usually because it's a place for families to gather and eat meals together. Plus, it's the place with all the snacks. But back in the 1800s, the kitchen was also the warmest place in the house, making it the perfect room to hang out in on cold days. Since the kitchen usually had an open fire for cooking, it would stay toasty warm. During the 1800s, iron stovetops became quite popular, and these would generate quite a bit of heat. When it was really cold, families would keep the fire burning all day long, generating a continuous supply of heat. It seems it was the closest thing they had to a radiator in the home, since it practically pumped hot air into the kitchen. Number 6. Close Living Quarters in the 1800s, unless you had some wealth, families would often live in close living quarters, sometimes in just one room. While this was probably incredibly difficult at times, especially in families with more than a couple of kids, 
It was actually very convenient during the winter. Snuggling up close meant more body heat. And if the kitchen also happened to be in this room, that meant there was usually a fire burning. 5. Spending a night out at the pub Back in the 19th century, you didn't need a special occasion to go to the pub for a drink. Saloons and pubs were often heated by a fire and packed with people, which meant they were nice and toasty. Not to mention the fact that you'd likely be eating and drinking, which would warm your body up nicely. However, this was somewhat of a luxury, since if you wanted to hang out in a pub or saloon, you'd be required to buy something to sip on. Yep, not too high a price to pay for keeping warm. But if you couldn't afford to do this, going out to the pub may not have been an option. Number 4. Cleverly designed home decor While you decorate your house with vintage pieces like wing chairs and trendy room separators, it doesn't always occur to you that they may have served a bigger purpose than to look pretty. During the mid-1700s, people began using wing chairs in their homes, and they continued to be used well into the 1800s. These are basically armchairs that wrap around your sides and face. This extra fabric helped protect the face from a cold draft coming in from an open door. Their tall height served the same purpose. While it's fun to refurbish your home with pretty curtains, funky rugs, and tapestries, back in the 19th century, these home accessories were a must. That's because decor like curtains and rugs help insulate a room and retain any warmth in it. Thick, heavy drapes were great at keeping cold air seeping through the cracks of windows at bay. And hanging quilts or tapestries on the walls was also a great way to keep heat in a room. For those who could afford them, four-poster beds were a great piece to have during the winter. With these types of beds, you'd be able to drape fabric over the top of it and even the sides, keeping any cold air away from you while you visited Dreamland. Sounds pretty cozy, doesn't it? Number 3. Foot warmers Similar to the hands, a pair of cold feet can send shivers down your spine in freezing weather. The folks of the 1800s would use foot warmers to keep their tootsies toasty. They were usually constructed out of wood, tin, or even brass, and inside them were metal trays full of hot coals. Some boxes had carved designs on the side, and they had a rope or handle on top to make it portable. Women would often be seen with their feet in the warmers and their skirts covering the entire thing, helping to retain heat around their legs. People also enjoyed the use of foot warmers when they rode in sleighs and carriages to combat the intense outside cold. Number 2. Wearing fur In the 1800s, the fur industry was booming. To wear fur was somewhat of a status symbol, and the wealthy loved to wear them around town. But the truth was that these furs were excellent at keeping people warm during the most freezing times of the year. Unfortunately, animals with fur were in danger during this time, since fur was in such high demand. In 1810, just one season of fur production took the lives of 30,000 seals from the San Francisco area. But sea otters and seals weren't the only animals whose fur was desired. For those who could afford it, coats and scarves made of mink, beaver, gray fox, and more were incredibly desirable. Number 1. An open fire in the house Ah, a warm fireplace. Sounds nice, right? Chances are, you've seen some pretty nice ones in your day. Heck, even Netflix has a fireplace show you can put on to make your TV look like one. But back in the 19th century, having an open fireplace was a big deal when it came to keeping warm. Fire was one of the few things that guaranteed a household any kind of warmth. However, to keep fireplaces going, families would have to go out of their way to gather lots of firewood and kindling. While it was good to move around and get their blood pumping, this could turn into an arduous task. But it was necessary if they wanted fire in their home. As the 1800s progressed, the wealthier households could afford to put fireplaces in multiple rooms. These nicer fireplaces were called Rumford fireplaces 
and they were designed to carry away smoke and reflect heat more effectively. Mm, I don't know about you, but all this talk about keeping warm makes me appreciate the heat we have at our fingertips today. I think I speak for all of us when I say thank goodness for snuggly sweats and hoodies. Now, do you think you'd survive a harsh winter back in the 1800s? Give us your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to give this video a like, share it with your friends, and click subscribe. Stay on the bright side!